What's going on guys, take a look at the most recent trade in the NHL with Columbus sending Oliver Bjorkstrand and Seattle Kraken for a third and fourth round pick. If that sounds insane, it's because it was. I think we obviously know who won the trade in real life, also who's going to win the trade in game. I just wanted to kind of give you guys my thoughts on it. So this trade happened after Columbus signed Patrick Laine to a four year $8.7 million deal, got him locked up. They're about $6 million over the cap space, had to trade somebody. I really thought it was going to be Nike Fist. They're probably going to add a third and a fourth with Nike Fist to trade them. But as it turns out, they're getting a third and a fourth for Dork String, which I don't think was the right move. So like I was saying, guys, Goudreau, obviously, they signed. He's making more than that in real life. I still have to go update all the player contracts. I've just moved them to the right teams. Line is at 8.7, like I said, for the next four. I really think, you know, they could have moved someone else other than Bjork Strand. For instance, if they just didn't sign Good Branson, uh, he's not even showing up here. His trade value is so low. Um, that's at 950k as well. Four million four-year deal for Eric Good Branson. If they didn't sign that, they could have probably gotten away with trading nobody, just kind of moving guys down to minors, or whatever, or maybe trading away, you know, a cheaper player than Bjork Strand. Like, I really think the Branson signing was terrible, as we see here, and I even think they still didn't need to trade Bjork Strand. I think you know they could have traded away Knife and a sweetener, and I think that's a better move if you are trying to compete, which Clearly you are if you're signing Johnny Goudreau. So, Bjorkstrand here is honestly a really good player. 26 years old, 86 overall. He had a solid season last year with 57 points in 80 games, so about a 60-point pace there. If you guys care about analytics at all, you guys can see Jay Fresh's card for him. Great analytical player, which I think is why Seattle trade for him. Uh, if you guys don't know, they're really big on their analytics, which uh, they use for the expansion draft, which so far it hasn't really turned out, but I mean, they landed Matty Beniers and Shane right in the draft, and you know, they've made some pretty good trades and signings, so they're happy. Bjorkstrand here for a third and a fourth. I mean, uh, medium difficulty, this could be on very hard. Seattle's going to say yes. No questions about it. And I should guys give you an update look at the Blue Jackets lines. If you watched yesterday's video, you probably already have a good idea about this. So I've got Goudreau, Roslovich lining on the first line. I still really think, you know, the Blue Jackets need a true first line center. Now they could get that in Ken Johnson, who I've got playing, you know, second line left wing next year with Cylinder and Voracek. Maybe they try him first line center spot there between Goudreau and Line. A. That could potentially be a nasty all offense line uh, with Roslovich, you know, going back to the wing. Um, if he's playing right wing, you probably have Voracek on the left wing there. Nyquist, Jenner, Chinikov third line, Texier, Corrali, Robinson on the fourth. Defensively, there isn't too bad. Again, Goodbrands is probably bottom bear for four million bucks. You could add Borkstrand. I don't know about it. Uh, goalie wise too, uh, they weren't the best last year. Definitely need to get better goaltending. Want to you know make a push for the playoffs. And so we're not trying this trade from Seattle's perspective. One thing I want to point out, guys, like I can't believe no other team offered more than a third and a fourth for Borkstrand. I'm sure Kekalainen was calling all around, you know, trying to get the best trade offer. And it's like, how did a team like I don't know who's got some cap space to spend? I mean, the New York Islanders have 11 million. They do have to resign Dobson and Romanov, so I'm not sure if they could get to fit. The Senators could have definitely got it done. I know they need defense, but still, such a good price for that player. The Sharks had cap space. Probably would have been a great trade for them, honestly, before they um, signed some other guys. Still, they probably could have made it happen. I think the Jets could have made this trade, but they probably didn't because they have an internal cap. Uh, same goes for the Ducks. They have like 30 million in cap space. I mean, obviously, they're a rebuilding team. They want to be bad. But still, if you can get a player as good as Bjorkstrand for third and fourth, I feel like you'd do it. Um, same even goes for the Coyotes there. Buffalo Sabres for sure. I think Calgary Flames probably should be the team on this the most. Like, you just lost Johnny Goudreau. They probably didn't want to trade for a guy on the team that Goudreau signed with. I feel like that's probably part of it. You know, they felt like at that point they're trading Goudreau plus a second for Bjorkstrand and they were getting done dirty. So I think that's probably the only reason they didn't do it. But um, still, I can't believe like no other team was more active on this move. So again, guys, Bjorkstrand, solid player. Uh, for third and fourth, an absolute steal. Now, uh, real life, I think the third and the fourth was Calgary and Jets picks, but uh, this is my roster. Unfortunately, I don't know those picks on Seattle. I guess we can do the Avs fourth rounder, though, with the Seattle third. This is on medium. This can be on very easy. Columbus is not saying yes to this. So, yeah, like I mentioned, I think huge deal for the Kraken. And so after that trade, guys, this is what Seattle's lineup could look like for next season. Definitely a lot better than last year. Uh, they got Burkowski, Beniers, and Bjorkstrand on the first line. Basically a brand new first line since Veneers only played like six games for them last season. Now he was about a point per game. I feel like that could actually be pretty solid. I've got Everly, Wenberg, Schwartz on the second. Tanev, Gord, McCann on the third with Hayden, Geeky, and Donskoy on the fourth. So definitely the forward group looks a lot better. Especially too, imagine if Shane Wright makes the team. That's just another player to add to the mix. Defensively here we got Dunn, Larson, Schultz, Alexiak, Susie, and Borgen. I think I mentioned before in like my fantasy grade video, Schultz definitely gives them something they're missing. A bit more of an offensive defenseman. Goaltending wise, Grubauer is still the starter. Definitely need him to bounce back. And they got Jones right now as the backup as apparently Drieger is going to be out for uh, at least like, you know, the first 
few months of the season with an injury, uh, maybe even longer. So the Kraken definitely look a lot better. Calgary Flames are getting worse. The Ducks are in a full rebuild. The Sharks aren't all that great. The Kings are still decent. Um, I feel like, you know, they could maybe compete for a playoff spot. I definitely wouldn't put money on it, but you never know. And look at that. Brookshire's actually their highest rated player in game now. They get him for third and fourth. Just insane. So here's you guys' first look at Brookshire on the Seattle Kraken. Doesn't really look like him at all, but uh, there you go. Number 28, Brookshire. Newest member of the Seattle Kraken. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave that thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section which team you think won the trade. I'm sure, like, everyone's going to be saying Seattle, but you never know. Also, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that sub button down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.